Hi and welcome back, let's do SPFs. This is obviously one of the most requested videos of the year. The sun has started to shine in the UK. So let's have a look in part one at the best new SPF 50s at all price points, but specifically these are ones for the face. Um, there's no reason why they shouldn't be used on the body, but they're going to be slightly more lighter in texture and easier to wear under makeup and they won't pill. Part two will be SPF 30s. And we'll have a discussion about why an SPF 30 is an optimum SPF if you use enough of it. So let's start with SPFs. You know that you should be using them all year round and that if you spend any amount of time outside, it doesn't matter what the UVB index is, which is the current UV index, because it's the UVA that's doing the most damage in terms of long-term extrinsic aging. That's as opposed to intrinsic aging, which is just simply the passage of time. Now, Last year, and I have to say still, to this moment, this was my highlight. This is the absolutely brilliant, it's slightly repackaged by the way, this is the Garnier Ombre Solaire Super UV SPF 50, and it's one of those super light shaker lotions. Bearing in mind, and I've said this before, and I know that they probably don't want me to say this, but bearing in mind this is from the same company as SkinCeuticals and La Roche-Posay, you'll not be surprised to see that this is surprisingly similar to the Shaker Fluid but like from La Roche-Posay. I'm going to go on to a new La Roche-Posay product. It's brilliant. It works on everybody. I do not know a single person that has tried this that hasn't fallen in love with it. It sells out really quickly on all of the classic high street sites like Boot, Superdrug. It's brilliant, absolutely beautiful, goes on super light. The reason you need an SPF 50 is not that an SPF 50 offers a considerable amount more protection than an SPF 30, but we simply don't apply enough of the stuff. Let's go back in time to the Gwyneth Paltrow debacle of six weeks ago, four weeks ago, when was it? Anyway, like, you know, you can tell we're all locked in at home because the tiniest little thing blows up out of all proportion. Who cares how Gwyneth Paltrow applies her SPF? You're smart, you know you shouldn't use it as a highlighter, you know you need to put it on all over, including ears, backs of necks. Backs of necks are really important if you've got short hair down on the neck and down on the chest. You've heard my story, you've seen my chest. You don't want to grow older and have a chest like mine, trust me. I've got a weird dress on today, I'm not sure if you can see it. You don't want sun damage. I've barely got hardly any sun damage down here and sun damage down here. That's that's not going on holiday because that's not lying in the sun going on holiday. That's simply the day-to-day -day aggression of UV light on my chest because I forgot to put an SPF down here. So it's still my number one high street bestseller, but it's been joined by two this year. I love both of them. I was talking about this on Superdrug TV the other day, I was doing some filming. Uh, Garnier Ombre Solaire Sensitive Advanced Face. This is the Invisible UV Protection Mist SPF 50. And essentially what it does is you can use it, you can use it as your original first step, but it's super light, it's a mist. Don't breathe in while you're applying it, but you can spray it anywhere. You can spray it on shoulders if you're caught short. You can apply it over makeup. It will not mess your makeup up. This and this, High Street, it's kind of all you need really to see you through the summer. I have got a new one this year though. It's the Garnier Ombre Solaire Anti-Age Super UV. And this is the one that they say has got hyaluronic acid in and it's richer. And it's better for people who've got drier skin. It comes in this sort of packaging. And it's just, a, the other one is like a lightweight milk serum lotion. This is a slightly thicker cream. So it's much more hydrating, but still rubs in super easily. You know what I love about all three of them? None of them smell of holidays. I don't want my SPFs to smell of holidays. I don't mind it on my body when I'm on holiday, but if I've actually got to go about my normal day-to-day -day life, I don't want my SPFs to smell of coconuts or cocktails or anything like that. I really don't. Vanilla, Tahitian, Tahitian mono oil, I just don't. I want my skincare to be relatively unfragranced. All of those products are amazing. Garnier are basically smashing it out of the park when it comes to SPFs. Tick, 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 tick. Go on. Go on counter if you can and look at them, but go online and snap them up now. In terms of lightweight products, my all-time favourite product comes from the same stable. It's this one. It's the Oil Shield UV Defence Sunscreen SPF 50. It mattifies. It's dry touch. It's, it's perfection. The only thing I have to say about it is it's expensive but it's the most perfect lightweight finish. Sits well under makeup, can be used really up close to the eyes. I just absolutely love it. I just think it's such a great product, I really do. SkinCeuticals can do no wrong when it comes to SPFs, but they just are spinny. 
Oh, by the way, a new study has just come out saying that, um, I should try and find the link actually and I'll put it below, showing that the CE Ferulic protects against erythema, that's sun-induced redness. The study's amazing. They basically just put CE Ferulic against a marker base product without any actives in it, exposed to the skin to the, the skin to the sun. And the CE Ferulic basically knocked the redness back by, I mean, it was visible, it was incredible. So put your CE Ferulic under all of those products. God, that's so nice. That's got a sort of soft focus. That has got such a beautiful finish. It's that combination of the chemical sunscreen, but it's the mineral sunscreen, but micronized. So you get that beautiful, almost like a, a sort of primer, soft makeup finish. Because you know that titanium and zinc dioxide, the two mineral uh, sunscreens, they are used in a lot of foundations. So you get that beautiful soft focus finish. It's like your skin, but on its best day. I heart it, but it's expensive. Right, let's have a look at new brands that have come to the UK or new products that have come to the UK this year. This is very interesting. This is ultraviolet. This is the range that's just gone into Space NK. I love their funky packaging. I mean, it's just absolutely beautiful. Of all the products in the range, this is my favorite. And this is the ultraviolet SPF 50 plus Supreme Screen Hydrating Facial Sunscreen. It's lovely. And for a start, I love the little pump action. It's almost got a slight tint to it, but I can't imagine it goes on completely clear. It looks sort of slightly, almost pinky goldeny. It's beautiful. It's quite hydrating. This is what I would use in place of my moisturizer, but it goes in really, really nice. Smells a bit holiday-ish, which I don't particularly like, but my God, I would take this entire ultraviolet, ultraviolet range on holiday. Yeah, it does smell a bit holiday-ish. It smells a bit SPF-ish, but it's a beautiful product. They also have another product, which I actually thought I was going to love more, which is the SPF 50 Ultraviolet Queen Screen, which is the lightweight sunscreen, which is actually like this. I mean, I love the packaging. Um, the problem is you will be tempted to use it like a serum, and obviously you need a lot more than a serum. But actually, even though it seems more lightweight and milky, it's harder to rub in. That's really full of emollients, that one. So that's better for dry skins. The one I originally looked at, which is the Supreme Screen, is better for skin like mine, sort of combination skin, or skins that just don't like a heavy finish. I mean, that must be lovely for dry skins. Don't forget you need to use enough of it. And enough of it is two micrograms per square centimeter of skin. It's quite a lot. Essentially, you need a teaspoonful. In all those videos that were going around about Gwyneth Paltrow, you could see that people were putting squidges down three fingers. I mean, it's two fingers for most people. It's three fingers if you're gonna do the ear, the back of the neck or a bald head or something. And then you need addition to neck and chest. So don't forget. So I like the idea of what Ultraviolet's doing. I wish they'd change the smell. It really does that. Honestly, that smell just takes me, actually that smell makes me miss holidays. That's what it does. If you love that smell, go for it. I know a lot of people do, it's just not for me. Now, Two other products that I love. This is La Roche-Posay and Thelius Age Correct SPF 50, and it's a lovely one. Now this one looks like it's going to be quite rich because it comes out and it's like a little kind of cream, um, but it goes in beautifully. Did La Roche-Posay really put a foot wrong when it comes to SPFs? I think not. I really think not, they're lovely. God, look at my skin wrinkling as I rub it in. That's the menopause for you. Sadly, there's nothing you can do about your loss of collagen, apart from protect your skin. It's lovely. I would say that and that give the most lightweight finish, obviously apart from the spray. And then moving down, probably this and the Ultra Violet in terms of being slightly more moisturizing. And then two final ones, which are really moisturizing. The Salty SPF 50 Daily Protection Formula is absolutely lovely, but really quite rich and quite moisturizing. And then the Lancaster Sun Sensitive Luminous Tan SPF 50. This is such a cult range. Lancaster is a range that's based out of Monte Carlo. And I remember going down there to their labs years ago as a beauty editor. And it's a cult range and it's the range that every beauty editor under the sun wanted and it's the most chic range to use. It does smell slightly suntanny lotion-ish, which I don't really like, but it's a lovely one to take on holiday. That's my roundup of the best SPF 50s currently on the market from sprays to lotions to serums right the way up to full on creams. Now I have to say here, cause somebody will go on underneath and they will say, are any of them physical sunscreens? No. 
They will clearly say if they are just a mineral physical sunscreen. Most of these to get that level of broad, broad spectrum coverage from UVA to UVB, to get enough star ratings for UVA coverage and stuff like that, because don't forget the SPF is just for the UVB rating. To get a broad spectrum, you need to look for the words broad spectrum. You need to look if they do have a, sun, a star rating on the back, which sometimes in the UK they do. But you need to look for an SPF 50 because if you don't apply enough of it, at least you know you're going to get an SPF 25 or an SPF 30. If you apply half of the amount you need evenly, at least you will get an SPF 25. That's why SPF 50 is so important. It's not because it's massively increasing its protection over an SPF 30. It's simply that we don't apply enough of the stuff. And the most effective, efficient SPF is the one you love using that's lightweight, that goes on easily and that you use every day. Slow and steady wins the race, right? except when it comes to preventing sunburn, which obviously you need to do anyway. I'm presuming you're not sunburning by now. There are some great products there at all prices. I would say in terms of my budget, you know, I absolutely love these two. And I love this. Everybody should be using this as a top up anyway. I've actually got a top up spray within the SPF 30s for next time as well. If money was no object, it would be that one. For, um, uh, for skins that like a little bit more moisture, absolutely loving the new ultra violet range go and have a look it's in space nk and the new la roche posay and then in terms of heavier coverage i do think those three are lovely that one's really actually quite deceptive you think because it's in a dropper it's going to go really light and actually it's really 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 emollient i accept the fact that even though i've got drier more sensitive skin as i've got older i simply don't like that gunky feeling and my advice with anybody, if you're thinking about putting an SPF on every single day and you want to try any of these, is try them in place of your moisturiser. Because as you'll know from the new, where is it? The new Garnier one, um, they've all got humectants in anyway. A lot of them essentially are really good moisturisers with a great range of sun filters added to them. So this has got hyaluronic acid and you'll find glycerin, you'll find some of them have antioxidants in them as well. I mean, essentially, they will replace your moisturiser. I don't think you'll need a moisturiser as well. Certainly not with the rich creams I've mentioned. Uh, I'm going to put all the details of all the products down below. Next time I do SPFs, it'll be SPF 30. And we'll talk about, it's very interesting actually, some serious brands have done SPF 30s this year. So you've got Dr. Dennis Gross, you've got La Roche-Posay, you've got uh, Kate Somerville, um, you've got... Zo Skin Health, and you've also got Tioxin. All of those are serious, reputable, really good, I love them, skincare companies. The reason they're doing an SPF 30 is you will suddenly find that shift in them being easier to use. And also you'll be able to create a physical mineral sunscreen. So next time I will include some physical mineral sunscreens. The problem with using a high SPF SPF 50 and above on a mineral physical sunscreen, they tend to be thick and gunky and give you that white face, that ghost face, which you definitely don't want, that sort of silver sheen alien face, which isn't good. The minute you come down to an SPF 30, you can actually go mineral. The key, obviously, is to use enough. So the simple rule is, two fingers to the sun, that's how much SPF you need on your face. Add another finger for a bald head, add another finger for the back of your neck and the front of your neck, and at least another finger for your chest. That's my rule. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing. I'll put all the details of all the products down below, and don't forget, next time, SPF 30s. There's no denying that an SPF 30 can be easier and nicer to use. You just simply remember to use enough of it. Peace out, Girl Scout, as Joe Jones would say. Sorry, if you don't watch my Instagram, you won't get that, but peace out.